and welcome to Highway, the first of two programmes from Leeds in West Yorkshire. We just passed through Newley Lock on the Leeds-Liverpool Canal, a staircase lock which drops over 26 feet on its final approach to the city of Leeds. Now, if you like the gentle life, this is the transport for you, especially if you're travelling the whole length of the canal, 127 miles with 92 locks. But in this programme, we're just travelling for a few miles along the banks, and very pleasant it is. Work started on the canal in 1770 and took 46 years to complete, making Leeds an important inland port and a junction for crossing the north of England. The numerous industries which have given Leeds its identity were largely triggered by the Cistercian monks of Kirkstall Abbey, who were sheep farmers, started a trade in wool. The abbey itself, which was started in 1152, stands on the banks of the River Eyre when it runs alongside the canal. And as it's Passion Sunday, I'm pausing here to sing a lovely Passion Sunday hymn it is a thing most wonderful. A little further downstream, and sandwiched between the River Eyre and Leeds Liverpool Canal, is Armley Mills, once known as the world's largest woolen mill, and was at the heart of the industry, and now well established as an industrial museum. Someone who has studied the history of Leeds is architect, broadcaster, and former director of Leeds Polytechnic, Dr. Patrick Nutchins. Patrick, what industries were involved in the development of Leeds? The basic industries of Leeds are really the ones you heard about at Coastal Abbey, but it enormously changed for two reasons. Leeds became a great manufacturing place and also a market, a wonderful market which started in the middle of Leeds on the bridge and then in Brigate and then nearby and it's always been a great market. But the major industries of Leeds were really the product and development of the Industrial Revolution. Any success stories, individual <coughs> success stories from those days? Um, in the 1880s, uh, Michael Marx arrived in Leeds. He arrived with 30,000 Jews altogether mm. in a period of about 20 or 30 years and found that they'd arrived just at the moment when a place like Leeds needed their skills as tailoring and also in selling and buying. Mm. And the beginning of Marks and Spencer's, of course, is in fact that little yes. bazaar in the market. Yeah. Then Burton's came along. Burton's uh, famous and, uh, and very proud of the fact that they invented a kind of bespoke tailoring in mass-produced quantities. So you can go to Burton's and theoretically, by the time you leave, you can have a suit, <laughs> especially made for you. Now, no, fate dealt you a double blow, didn't it? I mean, you had polio as a child, then you got, got over that, and then now you've got multiple sclerosis. That's quite right. I, I think, I mean, there are times when I think it's a bit much, really, and I have occasionally made a mild, a mild protest and said I think that's more than enough. But on the other hand, there are many people much worse off than I am. 
But it's also this, that I think you, like anybody who gets into the state that I'm in, you've just got to make the most of it. And it's no good sort of saying to yourself, uh, uh, it hasn't happened. Yeah. Nor is it worth saying I resent it. You just make the most of it. And I get around, I travel abroad, I, in this country, and planes, and things like that, all the rest of it. There's only two conditions you need. You must plan ahead, and you must get help from people. And I get wonderful help. I'm glad. Well, if you excuse me, Patrick, I have to go a little further into Armley. But I'll leave you and the viewers with the Rothwell Temperance Band playing Ravenswood. This is Armley Prison in Leeds, built in 1847 to the standard pattern of a 19th century penal establishment. It has been added to over the years, but still has the appearance of a medieval castle. Like many prisons of this era, it houses far more people than was originally intended. Plans are in hand to improve the situation, and stage one has already started. The present governor, John Jones, came to Armley in May last year. Governor Jones, this is known as a local prison. What does that mean? Well, I think the, uh, the best uh, way to describe that is its principal function is to serve the courts. Yeah. So that a very large proportion of the population that we have at any one time uh, are people who are attending the courts for one reason or another. Yeah. Those who are remanded in custody spend their time here yeah. until the courts have uh, decided what to do with them. Now, one of your troubles here is overcrowding, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, yes. Uh, uh, our figure originally was a prison built for about 640 people, but we regularly lock up 1,300 and we've gone as high as 1,440 in uh, the, the most overcrowded times last year. Of course you suffer from the old-fashioned building itself too. Yes, it's a Victorian prison, 140 years old, and nothing very much done to it in the whole of its lifetime. We're now embarked upon a massive rebuilding programme that's going to go on for several years yet. You've got a large chaplaincy team working here. Now, how important is the work of the chaplain? Well, it's vital uh, to the, the health and the well-being of the prison community. Um, a chaplain really has got to be all things to all men. Uh, he, he's friend, mentor, pastor, uh, offers spiritual and pastoral yes, yes. support right the way through the establishment. I'm talking about staff as well as to, as to prisoners. Just above the main hall of the prison complex is the chaplain's office, where I'm about to meet someone who has been working in his spare time with the chaplaincy team at Armley and has planned to join them officially in the near future, Jenny Barnes. Jenny, what made you want to join the chaplaincy service? Well, I worked for quite a long time as a, a volunteer in the prison. About six years ago, I started to work as a, a prison visitor. That was just to come in and befriend um, inmates and just chat to them. 
And I was also involved with prison fellowship as well, um, which helps um, people when they actually come out of prison as well as when they're in prison. And that was all on a voluntary basis, but I had a very strong conviction that I really would like to um, be more involved in prison life and, and take it up more professionally. You also work with the victims of crime. Does that put things into perspective for you? Yes, it does. I've just actually done a very in-depth project on abuse. And I've been looking at the whole area of physical, sexual and emotional abuse. And um, you know, I wanted especially to, to look at the thing as a whole so that I can, be, I can help the abused and also the abuser. Because unless we do something about the abuser, abuse will always go on. And, and people are abused, whatever has happened to them, whatever crime's been committed against them. And uh, so it's very important that we see things as a whole. Now, Army's a, an overcrowded prison and has a reputation for being somewhat difficult. Does that worry you at all? Um, to be honest, I never really think about it because I think that this prison is, is no better or worse than any other when it comes to the actual people who are in mm. here. Um, what matters is that you know, we are all actually made in God's image and every single person has some good in them. And I think it's important that we actually see people as individuals rather than as a whole group of people together. And uh, you know, I think the chaplaincy is, has a very important role to play here in actually giving people some hope for the future and, and you know, helping them to see that there is, there is life after prison and uh, you know, it can be helped. My God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Saviour God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow in humble adoration And there proclaim, my God, how great thou art Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to me How great thou art, how great thou art Then sings my soul Savior God to me, how great thou art, how great thou art. Oh, to sleep your eternal sleep, call to my Maker's bosom, lay to rest my earthly change which bind me so tight and dim my sight such pleasures to forego are nothing compared with eternal grace these temptations of the human race i long to be at one with my creator god i have walked so long this lonely dark in youth and childhood belief comes easily in middle age confusion leaps to me each path seems wrong the clock ticks on tick tock tick tock life's passing by must it be church lord steeped in tradition its meaning is lost to me like a relic must we meet in your house lord the thought which i abhor house of the righteous pious and sane not of the curious confused insecure i know in my heart there's more to me a right side a good side that you seldom see I speak to you often, half-heartedly. Please give me an answer, a sign to read. I know deep inside I carry your seed. I ask for forgiveness. Please let me come home. 
this soul in life's wilderness, a sheep far from home. Please hear me and give me a sign. I wish to share, Lord, the love that is thine. God is good. God is merciful. God is forgiveness. God is pity. God is everything in me that is good. God is love, but I don't understand him. Jenny Barnes reading the prayer of a confused Christian written by a remand prisoner at Leeds Prison. The canal flows on from Armley to Leeds city centre and the penultimate lock of the Leeds-Liverpool Canal. The city was once home to my old friend and fellow entertainer Frankie Vaughan, who taught at Leeds College of Art before beginning a singing career which was to make him an international star. But Frankie is almost as famous for his work with boys clubs, which endeavour to keep lads out of places like Leeds Prison. Frankie. How did you get involved? I became a boys club member in Lancaster when we were evacuated from Liverpool. I'm originally a Liverpool boy. We were bombed out of Liverpool. And I joined the lads club at Lancaster and got very involved with the boxing and the football and the swimming and the army cadets. And it stayed with me. When I came into show business, I found it was easy to walk into a boys club, play a little snooker, play a little table tennis, and in fact, do a workout and play soccer with the lads and, and and have a little bit of boxing. So boys clubs then came to me and said, we know you're still involved with boys clubs. You like being around boys. So I said, yes, I do. I find a lot of time for them. Uh, would I get involved in a, a national major way, which I, I did and I have been. I, I earn money for boys clubs wherever I can. And one reason behind your success is your happy marriage, isn't it? Well, uh, we're both very lucky people. Good I've got a happy it. marriage and wonderful children, one grandchild. Can I talk to you about children We bring into the world with love For you do all you can for children But it never seems enough And they do things that make you wonder And your heart, they can sometimes break But what a difference To your world those children make Can I talk to you about children? For there's something I need to know When the time comes for them to leave you Is it hard to let them go? How will they get along without you? You ask yourself time and again is the question How will you get along without them? The canal has now completed its journey into Leeds, 
and has joined the Air and Calder Navigation. Not far from the river's edge is Leeds Parish Church, home of one of the finest choirs in the country. We're about to eavesdrop on the choir's rehearsal with the choir master, Simon Lindley. And up to Lou. Well, most of us are there some of the time. Right, what's tempo one, May, Mr Bayliss? It means the uh, first tempo of the piece. Thank you very much. Bottom of ten, everybody. <laughs> A good point to enter. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> Flinging wide the gates. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Have a seat, boys, please. Oh, that's... They are polite, aren't they? They are. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, nice to meet you. Very nice to see you. Now, how long has there been a choir in the Paris Church here? Exactly 175 years, give or take. Great tradition, then, yes. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Now, where do the, the lads all come from? Well, we don't have a choir school. They come from a variety of schools in Leeds and District, about 11 or 12 different schools. Yeah and they travel, most choirs rehearse in the morning, standing up. Yes. Our choirs practice in the afternoon, sitting down, because they come every day straight from school, Monday to Thursday, and again on Friday later on at night. Nice to meet you, Simon. It's very nice to meet you. And we'll get back to preparing <laughs> what we're going to do. Thank you very much. OK. Bye, lads. Right, then. Gates again, bottom of page 10. it from Highway for this week. Next week we're staying in Leeds but on dry land. I'll see you then. And next week's highway is five minutes earlier.